So that one was a 14, this one's a, mm, yeah, it's a 10. Rust stopping it going on properly. I'm not too confident about this one, but let's have a go. Couldn't see any gap appearing there. I thought, am I just slowly shearing this off or is it actually moving? But it is actually moving, which is a pleasant surprise. There we go. Yay, we've got the, uh, the bracket off. So there you are. That one's quite crusty, but that support's come off. Now this piece has come off. I'm pleased about that because that means I can, can you see anything at all? That means I can move it out of the way. This is quite crusty but I think it's just about salvageable. So it's uh, yeah, pretty, pretty crusty but doesn't seem to have any holes in it so a good wire brushing and a coat of rust proofer I think will see us right with that for now probably going to have to take the speedo cable off to get to it. Just going to put this one back in loosely just to hold the fork leg in position. It's got a, a circle up on the top to stop it sliding out but won't hurt to have that in place as well. Time for some wire brushing and I'm probably not going to have the camera on for that because I don't want to spray uh, rusty debris into my camera lens. Well, that speedometer cable doesn't want to come off. It's actually turning where the where this linking piece goes into the plastic housing. If I keep turning it, I'm liable to strip the threads. So I've got two options really: get some thin grips on the uh, on the brass part just there, and try and turn it, remove all this grease that's caked on in the process, or I can just uh, attack this in situ. I'd I'd uh, rather not because. It's going to be, even if I take this cable holder off there, it's going to be quite close to the bike. So if I can get that out separately and do it on the bench, I'd prefer to. But if I hold this with pliers, I'm going to likely chew the threads up. I think I'm going to have a, uh, a semi-careful go at it and see how we get on. I don't really like doing this. Okay, Yamaha, you win. I'm just chewing that, that up. That's a brass fitting. I'm just chewing it up, and I don't really want to do that because that's kind of bodgery, isn't it? So um, I'll get this as far away from the bike as I can by taking this little uh, little speedo cable hanger off there, and then uh, we'll, we'll see what we can do from there. Right. So what I'm going to use here is this fine bit of kit, this is a Facon one, really nice angles like that and you can put screwdriver bits like this directly into it and then it's got some magnetic jiggery pokery that holds them in place. It's really good for just using to apply a bit more torque in situations like this. However, arguably not quite as much torque as a screw appears to require.
a bit more penetrating oil, leave it for a while longer, move on to something else. So I decided to take the fork legs off just to give me slightly better access for spraying this and also I think it might be a bit easier to clean, try and clean this rust. I don't know if this one, I don't know if you can see that, I don't know if this one is too far gone for an MOT but uh, I'm going to have a go cleaning the rust off. These ones look to have a little clip in the top that's stop them, stopping them coming out. Like so. I wondered if that might happen, right, as you take the weight off the back of the, off the front of the bike, excuse me, the back wants to flop downwards. So just put that in, go and put a handy piece of wood, which I just so happen to have here, under the back wheel. Just so it doesn't sit too far back. At least this is it going to enable me to get this fork on a flat surface on a piece of wood, or at least I hope it is, to use an impact screwdriver to uh, to try and remove that. Mm. Not ideal. Let's use the new tyre as a temporary rest for it. There we go. Okay, so for this side, I've got the brake caliper tied up there using a hook I just made out of an old wire coat hanger. Very useful wire coat hangers, so uh, don't throw them away if you uh, want to get rid of them out of your wardrobe, keep them and use them to make hooks and stuff like this. Let's take the other spring out. find where the end was. Just applying a tiny bit of leverage to part the fork clamp. Take that one out. There we go. So that isn't looking particularly healthy. In an ideal world I'd replace it but there is kind of a, a budget in mind to, to get this back on the road and doing things like this might well exceed it. So I'm going to have a go at cleaning it up as best I can and we'll see how we get on in terms of function and uh, passing the MOT. Once we've cleaned it up we're going to plaster it in grease and then the fork seal will just clean the grease off the bit that actually gets used, leaving the remainder covered in grease to protect it from the weather and to stop this from getting any worse. Okay, next stage is trying to get this screw out that's holding the speedo cable in place. You see I've got it stacked up uh, suitably precariously on some pieces of wood. This is to give me a hard surface against which to hit it with the impact screwdriver. In case you haven't used one of these before, essentially you hit it on the top with a hammer and that forces this end to turn very slightly as you're hitting. One thing to make sure of is that you're actually turning it in the right direction so that you've got it set to undo rather than do up, although sometimes trying to do it up a bit more first can help in breaking the rust, but we'll try with a straightforward undo for now. So, after a lot of hitting with this, 
I then upgraded to this with this and finally that screw is loosening yes that was really 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 tight in there you can see it's the right to right claggy old mess where it was screwed into but there you go so you can see the screw head maybe you can't maybe you can it's pretty well preserved Screw's really rusty, but a good clean up with a wire brush and that'll be fine to, to go back on. Put plenty of copper slip on it, obviously, or anti-seize, whatever you want to call it, so that uh, hopefully it doesn't happen again. And that's just given me a bit more room to play with with, uh, with preparing this. Not much, but, but a little bit more. I've already started cleaning it up with a wire brush. I'm just going to give it another go and then we'll be spraying some uh, rust proofer on. So I'm going to be spraying some uh, built Hamber Dynax UB, that's the brown stuff rather than the clear stuff, the clear stuff being UC. If this was on an area where it could be seen I'd be using the clear but brown stuff's fine for this. This is really good stuff, not particularly pretty but it will stop it rusting and it will do the job just fine. I'm going to be wearing a mask, strongly recommend you do the same. Okay, so I just let that dry and then clean off any uh, any overspray that's gone on surrounding areas. Most of the overspray that will have gone on anywhere is going to be uh, somewhere that's completely out of sight. Um, and I've, you see, I've put it's fallen down a bit. I have put a bit of uh, paper around just to uh, just to try and protect the bodywork. A bit's gone on the caliper, but it will clean off with uh, with a bit of solvent, so that'll be all right. I'm not too worried about that. So I move on to the fork legs now. This one is the one that isn't quite as bad. I'll turn it around for you so you can see there's a there's a bit of surface corrosion there. There's these tiny little pits here which could tear the fork seal and then it would start leaking oil and then well aside from not being particularly safe that would be an MOT failure as well. So got some 1500 grit uh, wet and dry sandpaper. We're going to use that uh, with some WD-40 to try and uh, try and sand these down and deal with them. Always important to sand that way rather than that way because if you sand that way you create channels that the oil can uh, can escape from and so you could potentially make matters worse. This is going to take quite a long time. I'm not going to video it all because that would be pretty dull. So uh, give me a little while and I'll come back and show you what, I've, uh, what sort of progress I've made. Okay, so here's the first of the two fork legs. You're never going to get rid of... Is the light catching that? I think it is. You're never going to get rid of really big patches like that. But I hope you can see that's a substantial improvement. Most importantly, it feels really smooth. So the fork seals are hopefully not going to uh, get get torn or you know damaged further prematurely by by those little pits of, of rust. So what I'm going to do now is apply. I said grease before, but actually I decided as I've got some of this, I use some of this, which is my uh, built Hamber Dynax UC clear film anti corrosive wax, as it says. So put that basically probably down to about there, where you might think the swept area is going to going to stop. That means that the rest of the fork chrome area will be covered in a relatively clear film. It will attract the dirt, so it won't look quite as shiny and nice as that, but it will stop it getting any worse. And that, you know, this is this is never going to be a show bike. It's a it's a 50cc scooter. It's, it's going to keep it going uh, for a good few miles yet and protect it from the weather. So that's what I'm going to do. I've cleaned this up with brake cleaner, so we're ready to go and apply that to uh, that protective coating now. Unless I drop it on the floor beforehand. So there we go, that's the first one done. You can probably see there's a slight haze to it where the uh, anti-corrosion anti -corrosion wax is in place. 
It's also um, running a little bit because obviously wherever you spray it, it falls to the bottom of the fork. I keep turning it round to try and uh, minimise that but uh, it's taken a while to dry so we're probably just going to have to accept that we're going to have a bit of variation in the uh, in the finish there. So I'm going to go and do the same with the other fork leg then we'll put them back on and then hopefully be able to start making some progress towards getting this back together. Okay so fork leg number two not looking quite so healthy as you can see. I don't know whether this is going to pass an MOT. My understanding of the regulations is that as long as it's not leaking, as long as it's structurally sound, which I feel it is, then it's all right. These areas have come up quite well. They feel really smooth, so they won't be tearing the, the oil seals, but obviously these, uh, you can't quite say the same for those bits. They're not looking great, are they? Ideally, we'd take these off, re-chrome them, but as I said, there's a kind of a budget to uh, to this and that would blow the budget a little bit. So we're gonna try with them as they are and see how we get on. Okay, time to start putting things back together. I've given this a little bit of a clean, not much of a clean. I know it's still mucky, just uh, just getting the worst of the mud off it. We're not going for concourse here. This is kind of nearly dried now. It's still a bit tacky, but it's, it's next day from when I sprayed it. Looks all right. At least it's covered from, from the weather and road salt, so it shouldn't get any worse. Okay, so now time to put the fork legs back on. So we'll just give this a clean out. Little bit of anti seize, copper slip, whatever you want to call it, on these bolts. Top settings 30 newton meters. You may notice that as I put that fork leg in it started to scrape off the wax coating that we've sprayed on and indeed I've caught a bit of it with my finger there so I may need to reapply that but that's that's the whole idea really not to put so much at that end but at this end of the fork as the forks go up and down the fork seals will gradually push back the wax coating but only as far as is needed so that the rest of the fork is protected. Rest that back on its bolt. Oh, look what I've done. A classic. Any of you spot that as I was doing it?
Okay, we'll try again with the bracket in place. 